Now we have a velocity versus time graph. The shape is exactly like the previous graph, but this is not position. It is velocity versus time graph. See if you can th describe the motion of this object with words. This is a velocity graph. So the graph tells you the velocity. At the beginning, the velocity is zero. That means the object starts at rest. At t equals to one, the object would have a velocity of negative four meters per second, meaning it's traveling at four meters per second in the negative x direction. So for the first second, it speeds up from rest to four meters per second, traveling in the negative x direction. And then for the next three seconds between t equals to one and four, the object slows down. It goes from negative four meters per second to zero meters per second. It comes to rest momentarily at four seconds. So it slows down, still traveling in the negative direction for those three seconds. And then it speeds up. Now its velocity between four and seven is positive. The object now travels in the positive x direction for the next three seconds, and it speeds up to four meters per second from rest. The next second, between seven and eight seconds, the velocity stays a constant four meters per second in the positive x direction. And then the velocity is still positive, but it gets slower and slower to rest, zero velocity again at this moment, which is uh, you can find the t specific time because uh, it goes from this to this value in one second. So you got two triangles, this one here and this long one. Similar triangles, that's two to five and that's two to five. So this time here is two-fifths of a second. That will make it 8.4 seconds right there. So it comes momentarily to a stop at 8.4 seconds. And then it turns around because its velocity then turns into negative. And it speeds up from rest, zero meters per second, to six meters per second, in traveling in the negative x direction. And then it speeds up at a slower rate, from negative six meters per second to eight meters per second. Now, if I look at the x-axis, let's say the object starts at x equals to x naught. And at first it starts at rest and then it speeds up. So it speeds up in the negative x direction until it reaches four meters per second. And then it continues to move in the negative x direction but it gets slower and slower and it slows down momentarily to zero meters per second. And that's what we call a turning point. Right over there at four seconds, the velocity changes from negative to positive, which means uh, the object turns around and now switches direction. It travels at the positive x direction. And uh, gets to constant speed, stops accelerating, but keeps going in the positive direction. And then it slows down, momentarily getting to zero meters per second and ready to turn around. So switches to negative x direction, speeds up, and then continue to speed up just at a slower rate. That will be at 10 seconds. So at the turning points, four and 8.4 seconds, you have zero velocity. Now let's see if you can indicate the time interval or the moment when the object has the fastest speed, when the object is at rest, and when the object has a constant speed and in which t time interval the object is uh, speeding up.
the fastest speed. That means uh, it's the largest magnitude for velocity. When the velocity is positive, the lar largest magnitude happens there, 4 meters per second. When the object has a negative velocity, the largest magnitude happens at negative 8. That's larger magnitude than this one. So it's at negative 8 meters per second, which means it's at t equals to 10 seconds. At rest, that means the velocity is zero. The velocity is zero at t equals to zero, at t equals to four, and uh, 8.4 seconds. Part C, constant speed. That's when the velocity doesn't change. So it is uh, t equals to seven to eight seconds. Part D, speeding up. Speeding up means uh, the magnitude of the velocity increases. So the object should have a graph that's getting away from zero, getting away from the rest zero meters per second. So this part, from zero to one second, the object is speeding up. This part, it's slowing down because it's getting to zero meters per second. And then speed up again, same speed, slows down, speeds up, speeds up. So speeding up, that's t equals to zero to one second, t equals to four to seven seconds, t equals to 8.4 to 10 seconds. Now see if you can answer these questions for the same velocity versus time graph. To find the displacement from a velocity versus time graph, you will need the area. So the area of the graph, and you want it to from t equals 1 to 8. 1 to 8. When we talk about the area of a graph, we are talking about the area between the graph and the zero line. So it's the area over here, between the graph and the zero line. Below the zero line, the area is going to give us a negative displacement because below the zero line, the velocity is negative, meaning the object is traveling in the negative x direction. Of course, that means that the object is going to end up with a negative displacement. Above the zero line, the displacement is positive because if the object is traveling in the positive x direction with a positive velocity, it's going to end up giving us a positive displacement. Now, in this particular case, this negative area, the triangle here, happened to cancel with this positive area right here because they have exactly congruent triangles. So all we need to do is to find that area. So the displacement is the area of these three parts added together. Like I said, these two, they cancel. They happen to cancel. That means all we have to do is to find the area of that rectangle which is the height times the base. The height is 4. The base is 1. So the displacement is 4 meters between t equals 1 and 8 seconds. Part B, average velocity. So we can conveniently use the displacement divided by time. That gives us the average velocity, which is the 4 meters divided by the delta t, the final time minus the initial time, so it's 7 seconds, 4 sevenths of a meters per second. Positive means the average velocity is in the positive x direction. Part C, you want the instantaneous velocity, the velocity at a certain moment. So you just have to read off the graph because it's a velocity graph. 4 seconds, the graph gives you zero. If it's zero, you don't really have to write the meters per second. You can just write zero. You don't need the unit. Part D, average acceleration. Do you remember what the average acceleration is? It is delta V over delta T. 
Now the graph gives us the velocity. That means uh, we will have information for the final velocity and the initial velocity. So delta v final minus the initial divided by the time. From the graph, the final velocity at 8 seconds is 4. The initial velocity at 1 second is negative 4. So the final is 4 minus the initial is negative 4 divided by the time, 7 seconds. So this gives me 8 sevenths meters per second squared. And then part E, we want the instantaneous acceleration. The acceleration at a certain moment. From a velocity versus time graph, the instantaneous acceleration is the slope of the graph. So we need the slope, which is rise over run. At t equals to 4 seconds, again, it's a straight line right here. So the slope over here is the same as the slope anywhere along this line. And uh, in this case, I'm just going to use this triangle here. The rise is 4. The run is 3. So the rise is 4, the run is 3. That means uh, 4 thirds meters per second square. Now let's plot the acceleration versus time graph. The acceleration is the slope of the graph. So from 0 to 1, negative slope, negative acceleration. From 1 to 7, positive slope, not a steep. So this absolute value, the magnitude is smaller and it's positive. And then what's the slope? 0. So it's 0 right here. A to 9, negative slope, and it's very steep. So the magnitude of the slope is high. And then, not as steep. So that's the acceleration versus time graph.